Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ around the globe. This is Gwendolyn Song. I'm returning again with another broadcast of the Sackcloth and Ashes News Report. This evening's broadcast is dedicated to those who are suffering catastrophic losses from possibly the largest volcanic eruption of this century. There are other unofficial reports of this actually being a missile strike based off of satellite images of an object coming down. So far, five have been reported dead, four injured, and many others missing. Many. Entire islands destroyed in the kingdom of Tonga. And let's take a look at some of the damage now. Several news outlets are covering this story. They have been for several days. But friends, as a member of the body of Christ, you know, I strive to bring you a different angle to this news story. And that is the need for those who are in Christ to offer up prayers and any kind of support that is needed to be done. As damage assessments are underway and the need for communications to be reestablished, let us pray like never before for those whose lives have been affected in this tragedy. They need fresh water. They need food. They need shelter due to the destructive forces of the tsunami and the subsequent waves. Generally speaking, Tonga is a Christian nation. There are many other religions there as well as a very strong presence of the Mormon church. Religion is one of the biggest influences of their culture. And may we lift up these people in our prayers, all the people who have been affected from these tsunamis, that they will come to the truth of who Jesus Christ is before it's too late, that they will surrender their lives to him. We are living in the last days. The same underwater volcano, that erupted just four days ago, also erupted in 2009 and again in 2014. But this eruption that just happened this week was far more lethal than anything they have seen. The speed and the force of the magma was unrelenting. And again, there are reports, unofficial reports circulating from underground news sources that this may not have been a natural event. May the Lord Jesus Christ comfort his people who are directly or indirectly involved in this disaster. And I know, friends, when I was praying over this situation earlier today, the Holy Spirit told me to ask others to pray for those who are in line next for the next disaster. Because even though disasters may seem like they are orchestrated by the hand of God, and ultimately God's hand is allows everything that happens on the globe. These things may in fact be the shenanigans of the fallen angels with their, we with their weapons technology. They have weather technology too. The devil knows that his time is very short. He has been a murderer and a deceiver from day one in the Garden of Eden, and there is nothing new under the sun. So as we see these events on the global news, we need to ask ourselves these questions. How can these events open up people's hearts to the knowledge and the mercy of God? How can these events draw people closer to their creator? And how can the body of Christ come closer to their maker as they are being purified for the kingdom of God? These are very important questions to consider as we th see these things unfolding on the news. Now, a passage that I would like to end this broadcast with this evening, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, one of my very favorites. The Lord says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right, righteous hand. Well, thank you for joining me in this broadcast this evening, friends. I, I pray that all of you out there today have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because tomorrow is not guaranteed. Good night.